Okay, hey everyone, thanks for joining us. My name is Bogdan, uh, that's my colleague Armin. So uh, uh, we both work at Telenav as part of my panelists and uh, that means that uh, we edit uh, the OSM data constantly. So uh, here you can see the uh, US uh, edits in the uh, for our team from our team uh, the edits are represented by uh, as on county level and they are based on the most important metro areas as uh, Phoenix uh, Dallas or Detroit uh, most of our edits are uh, based on uh, road geometry road name turn restriction and other way relations uh, most important for navigation systems uh, that's a similar example for uh, our edits, uh, but this time is in uh, Canada. The edits are represented on uh, census divisions, and uh, also most of them they are focused on the main uh, important uh, metro areas in, in Canada. Okay. So, uh, first of all, hi. Uh, why did we do this? So. Uh, we, as my colleague Bogdan said, we edit a lot in uh, in OSM, and uh, every area is different from another. So we are uh, in a constantly learning process, and uh, we uh, need to improve our our edits because we need to uh, to understand the local editing patterns. So uh, we uh, we created this script to see the local editing patterns, and uh, this also helps us to see the evolution in the map also regression from uh, one month to another and uh, we also can see which map features are being deleted and find out why this uh, this happens so this is a simple uh, way we uh, developed and uh, a flexible method to better understand the locally the local editing patterns and uh, the evolution of the map here we can see uh, the output of the the, the script on, uh, on the left, we can see some ways, some service ways that have been deleted. And on the right, we can see the OSM uh, data. So uh, in the left, there is a, a, a previous version of the map. And on the right, it's the current version of the map. So we compare the, the current version of the map with the previous version and find out the differences. Even though uh, these are service ways, they are uh, pretty important for a full coverage of, uh, of the road in, uh, in OSM. We also uh, detect modified ways, so uh, if the road geometry has been modified, here we can see a motorway link that has been modified, has been moved, the nodes have been moved up uh, to the north, and uh, in the left picture we can see the output uh, from the script, and on the right we can see the data. Uh, as you can observe, the other parts of the way, so the other roads besides the modified one, are aligned with the satellite imagery, and uh, also with, uh, you, you can also see the o OCC tracks there, which, uh, which uh, provide us with uh, accurate positioning of the road. OK, this is all fun and games, and this is how the script helps us. But uh, how does this uh, help the community? So uh, we can identify vandalism acts, even done by a mistake, because most of them are, are done by mistakes. And we can, uh, we can see if, uh, if somebody modifies or deletes a big portion of the map. And we can go to those uh, places and edit, edit them. So it's a red flag from, for us. And it uh, also helps uh, our communication with the OSM community. So we can have a better understanding of the local editing patterns. And also for this project, we work with Liam Nesson. And uh, he helps us. Here is an example of some vandalism acts in Ecuador. Uh, it's probably done by mistake. So uh, in, uh, in this uh, area, we found a lot of uh, nodes that were randomly shifted and uh, disappeared in our script. So it was an easy fix, and, uh, and we just edited it fast. OK, so how does the tool work? First, we uh, download two PBF files, OSM PBF files. Uh, we use GeoFabric. We import them in, uh, os uh, in our DB using uh, Osmosis tool. And afterwards, we run our, our shell script 
on the DB, and we have uh, two different outputs, the deleted map features and the modified map features. And you can see uh, the map features that are currently supported by uh, our script. OK, but how does the tool actually work? So it's just a shell script that contains multiple SQL files. And uh, this is a visual presentation. So this is the actual script. You just uh, input your, uh, your password. You uh, import your, uh, or your PBF files. You import them. And afterwards, the script runs automatically. And it, it exports the uh, modified and the deleted uh, map features. This is Andorra, so it will be short. <laughs> the import will be short. Uh, you also need to uh, input your host to uh, export it uh, automatically. And it creates a new folder for you, name output, where you can find your files. OK. So uh, we had uh, some problem with, uh, with this, because Osmosis uh, doesn't really uh, know how to import into into two different schemas. We started Im uh, importing in two different schemas because we use uh, Postgres, Postgres SQL, and uh, we cannot cr uh, cross query between databases to see the differences between them. So what we did was uh, to create uh, two uh, two schemas. So uh, we used Osmosis to import it into the public schema, so import a PBF into the public schema. And afterwards, we created a new schema and uh, migra migrated all of those tables. And so the public wa was used as a temporary, temporary place. And we imported the new PBF there. So it is easy to cross-query uh, the tables in this way. OK, so after we have the two PBFs imported, uh, we need to start generating the output, the output files for, uh, for what we need. So uh, in order to do this, we, as my colleague said, we use multiple SQL uh, queries that compares the nodes, the ways, and the relations, but also compares the tags from those map features. Uh, comparing uh, the comparing are made by between the two OSM PBS file load uh, loaded before, and uh, this is how the the output is uh, is generated. So uh, in order to to obtain the output, uh, we did some cross queries that involves creating buffers, calculating the distance between move nodes and calculating uh, moving angles between nodes and checking if the deleted road uh, geometry was added nearby. So, uh, and for better accuracy uh, and data consistency, uh, we filter the results based on specific threshold and uh, specific conditions. Because uh, initially we obtain a lot of ways, a lot of uh, very big output, and we need to, to filter the data uh, in order to become way more relevant and useful for us. So uh, we also, uh, when we apply the threshold, we, we took in consideration the road category also because uh, we focused on, uh, especially on the navigable roads because those are the most important for a, for a navigation system. So uh, we we took in consideration our service way, residentials, and so on, the uh, motorway. Okay, uh, so uh, after we, we filtered the, the output, uh, we split it in two major categories, uh, deleted map features and modified map features. And each of this uh, each of this category has uh, subcategories based on the on on the map feature type as uh, ways, names, uh, relations, and so on. Uh, for in for example, in case of the of a deleted uh, restriction, we also compare if the uh, restriction ID is in both of uh, of the PBF version, and if it's not, we also compare the members and the geometry members because uh, most of the, most of the users uh, deleted uh, delete a uh, restriction and add it with a new relation ID, and uh, that doesn't mean that uh, that restriction is uh, is deleted. 
so uh, we compared uh, uh, also the, the geometry of each member. Okay, after uh, after we generate the tables in our database with the output, we, we need to export the, the files. So uh, we export it in, in two formats, uh, shapefile and geojson. Uh, we, we choose this because geojson is a simple way to load it into your editor and is way more flexible and it's very uh, easy to to review. Uh, also, the the export is made on the same directory you previously copied the two PBS files, so it's very easy to find. It's exported automatically, and for there, you just take the files from there and load it in your editor and start reviewing the files or editing, if, if is the case. Okay, the, the code is uh, on our uh, Telenav GitHub page. Uh, the, the script and the readme files are there. The readme file uh, contain all the files you need and all the requirements or dependencies uh, that are needed to, to run the, the, the script. So uh, you can take a look and uh, see what's there. Okay, so uh, now that you know how we generate the data, let's uh, let's create some cool maps. Uh, this is the data from uh, the deleted road geometry for the San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, it presents the differences from two months, from June 2018 to July 2018. So uh, the higher the column is, the the bigger the bigger the density of the deleted ways are. So you can see in the Oakland area, there are, there are a lot of deleted. Uh, deleted roads. We uh, applied the same thing on uh, a US level, mostly on the top 60 metro areas. As you can see, the, the East Coast has the most delicious, uh, delic uh, delicious, delicious, the most uh, of the removed ways in, uh, in this uh, relative short period of time. So here are the modified uh, nodes. If, uh, if, if you can see, there is a, there is a, a graph down where you can see the initial uh, position of the node and the modified location. This is probably, again, to some mistakenly uh, vandalism or somebody just pulled the node by, uh, by mistake. We also did this on a US level. But here we can see a, a modified intersection. For us, this is a red flag. Because we know that uh, in this intersection there were a lot of uh, modified nodes, so this means that probably there is a, there is a roading construction there, or there is something going uh, on with the geometry. So it it really helps us if we check it out. So this is uh, on the U.S. level, so the modified nodes on the U.S. level. It's the same intersection and as previously. Okay, for for this presentation, we we run the, the tool for the entire U.S. and we extracted uh, from there a few metrics and a few examples for uh, to show you. And for uh, for deleted row names, we noticed that a lot of residential and uh, unclassified row names are deleted. Uh, they are um, dissipated on the entire entire US. So even the, the low level high categories road is important to to add back the the road uh, the road name. Uh, the same pattern we we noticed also on the deleted road geometry where. Uh, on a period of time of one month, uh, there was deleted about 400 miles of, of road geometry, uh, especially in service and residential uh, residential ways. So uh, we noticed that a lot of parking lots and service way are deleted for no reason. Don't know why, but there. 
And uh, on the restriction, we noticed that uh, a lot of users uh, added, uh, add, uh, added the road geometry by changing the uh, highway geometry from single way to dual carriageway and so on. When, when they added the road, they forgot to add back the restriction, even if it's a must to add it back. So uh, we noticed that a lot of no U-turns are, are deleted from, uh, from the map because the uh, user forgot to add back the restriction after they finish with updating the road, the, the road geometry. Okay, so uh, on the, in the new feature, we will uh, implement uh, more uh, support map features as, I don't know, lane number or speed limit or feature that, that helps us uh, to, to the navigation. And uh, also we want to upload the results, the output directly into a web server in, uh, in order to be more visible for a community and uh, skip the step when you load it, uh, the, the output into a JOSM editor or something like that. So we want to improvise, the, improve that. Okay, uh, here's the GitHub link for our Telenav mapping, uh, mapping uh, team. Feel free to check it, and if you have any ideas for improvement or updating, please contact us on the listed mail address, and uh, we'll be happy to to discuss and improving this this tool. Uh, that will be all. So thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, thanks. Thanks for your presentation. I have just one short question. Uh, when you are comparing the data uh, before yesterday and today or a few months ago, you're basically comparing OSM drop, right? Yes. And uh, concluding that, uh, that file, OSM drop, you will have exactly what user uh, made what changes and what is deletion and that will gonna trigger your flag. Just that, 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 that is my question. So uh, we have all the user information. We compare from uh, one month to, to another, and, uh, but we, we only filter for the Telenav users, so uh, we do not have a column with the user's uh, ID. We just fix the problems. But if uh, we see that a user ID repeats and uh, it, it signals that there is a vandalism in the map, we'll contact the user and ask him what's, what's happening, if he mass deletes something regularly or something. Uh, so one question that I have is, uh, so by the way, fantastic presentation, like clearly a like, lot of great work. So wondering how much of this is like open source or like available for, let's say if we want to adapt this to our own local communities and the local data sets, like like we, like we how much of this is easily accessible, like some of the visualization look like it's on deck.gl, uh, like mm -hmm. are some of those accessible for us to use, just wondering. Uh, the, whole, the whole code is on GitHub. We use only open source tools and uh, we made a few queries, but Basically, most of them is open source, so well, we don't mind if you want to change it or updating or improvement. Uh, if I can ask, I step outside of my role of uh, just bringing the microphone. In the GitHub repository, you are missing the license file. So if, I, if I'm one of those guys which are really uh, aware of open source licenses, I say, okay, there's no license there. So if you can fix that, that would be awesome. So uh, you can use the code if you want for personal use, but if you want to use it for, I don't know, company use or for something like that, we have to talk to the company and, uh, and to see what, what the licensing should be like. But if you want to use it for yourself, it's on GitHub, you can use it. But afterwards, I first have to talk to my legal team and after I, afterwards I can tell you an answer. Okay, if you put that uh, clearly on the repo, it's great. We'll put it. 
Uh, th thanks for the presentation. Uh, how do you engage with users whose change sets you're reverting? And how do you, do you have a strategy for um, avoiding edit wars where they, a user who might not see your message if you're trying to engage them would just delete the road again or because they think uh, uh, parking lanes don't belong in OpenStreetMap or something? So uh, since we started this process, we haven't reverted like any any chain set. Uh, mostly, we uh, this process is for uh, for us to adapt our editing patterns to locals. So basically, we just learn from the locals. But if we see something that is uh, it might be wrong, if a user does some some, some things like mass deletion or something, we'll contact him and say, look, you you did wrong here. Is there a problem? Can can you tell us? Is there uh, the road is in construction? So we don't revert anything. Firstly, we, we contact the users and talk to them. Okay, if uh, there are no other questions, we can thank our speakers.